I just spoke to Harrisburg police here, and they tell me that two people were trapped inside that row home behind me, and they had to be rescued. And it is best to wash your hands with hot water, but if you can't, you should use hand sanitizer. This is PSP's newest SUV. The color going from white to gray, and they have sparklers like these here, which are legal in the state. She declared victory in a huge celebration just about an hour ago. This may just be a piece of wood right now, but what's here in this woodworking shop now is going to impact hundreds of lives. Well, man's dad, Roberto Gutierrez, just moved into his house a month ago, and that home, which sits here behind me, is now condemned. Computer vision syndrome becoming more common. A Cary County woman hopes to have this mailbox full soon. Chris had to use about two rolls of this gorilla tape to keep his wheelchair from falling apart, but that's not something he's going to have to worry about for much longer. Boats, just one of the things here at the show this year. Another thing, security. He's having some transmission problems. With his car, encouraging people to behave or have to deal with this. What was his name on Roseanne? Um, Dad. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Working for you in Camp Hill, I'm Don White, ABC 27 News. Dawson County District Attorney Ed Marsico says this all started over some very nasty social media posts and then ended up with a boy being shot on that lawn behind me. Police arresting 30 year old Damaris Vido. This started earlier in the day when her niece posted something negative about her mother. Police were called to the 700 block of Highland Street in Swatera Township just after 6 yesterday evening. Police say Vido shot a 17 year old boy. The DA says the suspect's niece showed up at her aunt's house with a large group of people, including the victim. They got into a verbal fight when the DA's office says the suspect shot the teenage boy once in his neck. He's currently listed in critical condition with a spinal cord injury. The interaction with social media was negative, nasty. Uh, to an extent, there were uh, obscenities, you know, that were used. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's probably what heightened everybody's emotions. And investigators are currently sorting through social media posts, many of them which have been deleted. What else they found in those posts tonight at 7. Working for you live in Swatera Township, I'm Don White. Dennis, back to you. Raise money for a military charity. 11 year old Destiny Guthrie goes over her homework assignments with her mom, Rebecca. The fifth grader is working hard to be a straight A student, but she has a major hardship in her way. Unfortunately, we're broke right now. I was kind of freaking out a little bit because I didn't know what a uh, shelter was. It's hard, but you always have to find the reason to just keep going. Destiny, her mother, and 14 year old sister moved to York from Baltimore for a fresh start. They're staying at the York Rescue Mission's Women and Children's Shelter. This family is among thousands in the mid state who are homeless. Are you currently in a safe location? Sonia Pitsy is the Education for Children and Youth Experiencing Homelessness Region 3 coordinator. What they have in their life can fit into their backpack. She works with students and school districts to provide them with some of the resources they need. If they need any school supplies, I can supply them with that, or the school districts can supply them with that. Pennsylvania had more than 11,000 homeless students in 2007. It's more than doubled since then. In Pennsylvania, we have 26,000. Any of us can be in this situation. A lot of people are only one paycheck away from becoming homeless. Pitsy says people can contact their local school district or shelter to help kids like Destiny, who are part of this staggering statistic. Destiny says she's tired of classmates teasing her for being homeless and picking on her for things she can't control, such as not being able to afford shoes like these. They were making fun of me because it wasn't a name brand, like Jordans or Adidas or something fancy like that. It makes me feel upset and fix me, and it makes me feel not wanted. Destiny has a message for the entire mid-state. If you see someone on the street and you have possibly some spare food, share. At least try to help that person. I can be their voice for them, that they don't have to be the poster child. I'll be their voice, and I'll believe in them until they can believe in themselves, because there's just greatness in them, and they just need to know that, that that's going to come out. Greatness Destiny aspires to as she learns from her challenges and looks forward to the next chapter in her young life. No matter where we are, we always 
find a reason to smile. Working for you in York, I'm Dawn White, ABC 27 News. Chris Kennedy has been dealing with his disability since birth, but it hasn't stopped him from setting big dreams and inspiring the entire community. Cars zooming around the track, flaggers directing drivers. But this is all Chris Kennedy hears as he's making his way around the track. Yes, I was born deaf. I'm really proud of him. I think that when you lose one ability, you gain many others. And I think it's actually working well for him, not being able to hear. He's not distracted. It's working well for Kennedy. He's won two national sprint car titles, almost 70 cart wins, and more than a dozen wins in sprints. He's also one of the first deaf sprint car racers in Pennsylvania with an almost completely deaf pit crew. Like, I don't know, some people like think that deaf people can't really do things or they can't help. And so it's kind of cool that Chris is like promoting that, just believing in other people and helping other people. Chris is probably one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. I've just grown attached to him because it, it just makes him so, it, it's just cool. I mean, I, I don't know that I could drive a car without being able to hear what when I need to shift or or if my engine's letting loose. It's been a long journey for this 38-year-old father of two. A lot of people bullied him, picked on him, made him made fun of him, but he just had to learn to ignore it and keep going on, keep moving forward. Chris has challenges when racing in this car. He can't hear when something's going to go wrong, but like everything else in his life, he doesn't let his disability stop him. Chris has been racing for 12 years. His wife Kelly hoping he can be an example for those who can hear and those who cannot. He goes through everyday life like any normal person does. He doesn't let it stop him from anything that he wants to accomplish. I think it makes him push harder. Chris is living proof that anybody can, can do what they want to do if you just set your mind to it. He can do anything that hearing people can do. So, if you believe in yourself, and you can do anything that you want. Not being able to hear poses other challenges for Chris while he's racing. He doesn't know something is going wrong until it actually happens. And this has led to some accidents. The worst one happened in 2011. His car flipped six times. Chris had three ruptured discs in his back and also a separated shoulder. He was back on the track five months later after a lot of hard work in physical therapy. And his son that you saw in the story is six years old. He has him racing already. He has a little tiny sprint car. And his wife, who is not fond of the idea to begin with, she races as well. So it's a uh, family oh, affair. Uh, so he, he convinced her. He did. He made her a fan. Maybe he bought her some cookies or did something, but she wasn't up for the idea to begin with, but now she likes racing. And it's very ironic there because it's such a loud sport and it not is. being able to hear any of it. And his wife said that actually could be kind of uh, an advantage for him because mm -hmm. he doesn't get distracted during the right. race. But so he's able said to focus. He, he will glance at his pit crew he and will. he will, uh, you know, see them signing to him while he's racing. Mm -hmm. That's how they communicate. His pit crew is mainly deaf, so how they communicate before the race and during the race is they actually sign to each other, so he can see them across the room. ABC 27 News Daybreak starts now. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I am Dawn White in for Janelle Knight and Brett Thackeray. You are in for Dan on this very soggy morning. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're in here and uh, we had a lot of rain yesterday in spots. And we're following breaking news around the mid-state this morning of multiple downed trees in Dauphin, Cumberland, and Perry counties. In Perry County, dispatchers say Old Schoolhouse Road trees took out multiple power lines and wires, flooding shutting down part of Route 11 and 15 right by Susquehanna High School. And that road has since been reopened. In Cumberland County, a tree causing road closures on the 300 block of Sample Bridge Road from 4 to 6 this morning. And moving over to Upper Dauphin County now, lots of road closures due to trees down. Dispatch reporting road closures on the 1000 block of Piketown Road and Jonestown Road, Mountain Road, and more. They're still closed at this hour. Police are working with townships to help. And make sure to stay tuned to ABC 27 for the latest.
In new developments in the North Korea and American power struggle, the Chinese president speaking up during a call with President Donald Trump, recommending we avoid rhetoric or action that would worsen tensions with the country. Trump wants China, North Korea's biggest economic partner, to do more to pressure North Korea to stop its nuclear and missile weapons program. Emily Rao has more from Washington. And now to the latest on Penn State head football trainer Tim Bream, now charged with contempt for refusing to answer a subpoena in the hazing death case. This follows hearings for 16 members of former Penn State fraternity accused in the death of one of the frat's pledges. Bream lived in the fraternity house as an advisor. Defense attorneys want Bream to testify about what he knew of the alcohol fueled pledge event in February, leading to the death of 19 year old Tim Piazza. A contempt hearing is scheduled for the end of this month. And now to an update on more than two dozen deer from a Bedford County farm testing positive for chronic wasting disease. The Department of Agriculture quarantined 250 deer from the farm in February after a white-tailed deer on that farm died. That deer testing positive for the fatal disease. The herd was euthanized in June prior to testing as a precaution. And now test results confirm 27 deer were affected. So with the fall hunting seasons approaching, chronic wasting disease is a major concern. It's prompting the biggest response ever, including a new man leading the fight. This morning, Mike Parker is taking a closer look. A reminder about a tax hike in Chambersburg. The borough is reminding people a recreation tax was approved last year to pay for the new aquatic center. Chambersburg is getting a nearly $10 million loan to pay that bill. And new this morning, the curtains closing on a Pennsylvania orchestra. The Northeastern Pennsylvania Philharmonic is canceling their upcoming season due to financial issues. The orchestra ended last season on a deficit of more than $200,000. The 45 year old orchestra will play one concert in October and then shut down while it figures out its next move. Happening today, the Sport of Kings being played this weekend to benefit a nonprofit organization. The annual George F. Hemp Memorial MS Polo Match in Cumberland County wrapping up today. Last night was the Denim and Diamonds reception for sponsors, emceed by our very own Dennis Owens. The match today starts at 2 in the afternoon. Gates open at noon at the field just off the Carlisle Pike across from Cumberland Valley High School. Tickets are $50 per car. And also today, many will gather in Hershey to fight childhood cancer. A barber shop is hosting the event in hopes of raising $500,000 toward the St. Baldrick's Foundation. The event will also include raffles and games. It runs from 1 to 4 this afternoon. It runs Barber Shop. And women will gather in Cumberland County today to celebrate their differences. The Diverse Women's Summit happening at the Highmark Care Place Redhead Yoga Studio in Lemoyne. The free event is to celebrate an inclusive community while raising awareness about unconscious biases. Well, don't go away. There's much more ahead on ABC 27 News Daybreak. Dennis Booterball is back behind the wheel of another cool car. The look of the Dodge Durango hasn't changed in years, but there's a lot of new features for this year's model. Hear Dennis's review after the break. And Facebook launching a new video service this week. The original reality and sports shows you'll be able to watch. But first, it's time to salute today's military hero. Today we honor fire control technician striker second class Michael W. Smith. He served in the U.S. Navy from 1965 to 1975 on the USS Newport News during the Vietnam War. He received numerous awards, including the Vietnam Service Medal and the National Defense Service Medal. We salute you and thank you for your service. And one thing that makes everything better is cheese. Yes. And you may be wondering how many types of cheese that you can fit on a pizza. I've always wondered that. Two, three, maybe more. How about a world record of 112? A pizza place in Waterford, Connecticut, just submitted their claim to Guinness Records. They needed to beat the record holder from Oregon, who topped their pie with 102 varieties of cheese. Very cheesy. Yes. Although you like bananas, right? Uh, sure. Well, yeah. Kind of a. Uh, Old bananas, if <laughs> yeah. I remember. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I forgot about that. <laughs> well, thanks for watching us. We will see you right back here at 6 o'clock. Yes, we will. We'll see you tonight. Thanks.